200. We're finally here. Hope you can hear me. Hope I'm not blowing out your ears. Holler if you see me. Wagwan. How you doing? Episode 200. I'm bloody here. Let's bloody go. Yo, big up the stream chat. Oh, big up 40 FPS. My guy, 40 FPS. I'm sorry. I forgot to reply to your Discord DM, but I got it. And I did your edits. So now let's see what happens. Um, I did the bit rate 2000. Because last time I had it at like 4, it was going crazy. So I put the bit rate down to 2000. I've also put the FPS to 29.97 instead of 30 because it was getting my computer crazy. And at the moment, it's doing okay. It's not the best. It's still not ideal. At the moment, my CPU is currently running at 16.8%, which is good. Last time when I was doing it, it was 20%. I know it should be lower than that, but it's a MacBook and it's old, so bear with me. So I'm currently at 16.2% CPU usage, which is the, probably the lowest I've had in a while. 20 thousand b bit rate and stuff so we're ready to go but hopefully that should work so thank you to 40 fps if this stream goes through without a hitch and you don't see me glitching you have to thank 40 fps don't thank me thank 40 fps okay okay cool <laughs> big up the stream chat big up tv huck 200 part five <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah no um booth mcgee i do i plan to when i do because i want to spend a bit of money so i'm gonna save up a bit Booth McGee, I'm going to save up a bit to get a proper laptop. I don't want to buy like an in-between one. The next one I get, because every laptop I've had so far has been second hand or third hand or fourth hand or fifth hand. So when I do get my gaming laptop, I'm going to get a proper one. You know what I mean? Like I've said to myself, the next time I get a MacBook, I'm going to get a brand new one. I'm going to get one of those new MacBook Pros with the M3 chip. And when I get a gaming laptop, I'm going to get a proper one. So um, bear with me. I know it's not. I know it's annoying. I know it. I get it. I try my best to keep it as crisp as I can. I know sometimes it can be annoying with the playback, but I try to make sure the audio is good. I try to make sure the video clips I watch aren't stalling too much. So hopefully it should be okay. But I promise you guys, I will get a new one. This isn't what I'm going to be staying with forever and ever, especially if I want to take this stuff seriously. i got to make sure my equipment is of a certain level because, you know, people, I'm not like that usually. I'm pretty patient, but I know most people on YouTube aren't patient, you know? They really aren't patient. Most people are not patient. And if your stream stalls too much, they're just going to go somewhere else. And I don't blame them. You know what I mean? There's plenty of options out there. So um, bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Uh, Gave me laptop is an oxymoron. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, but it's the best for me at the moment because I don't really have the space to set up a whole PC. I, had to, I would have to move it around, right? So do you, so the best thing I can do is get a gaming laptop so I can move that around the room when I need to come and do my stream and shit because that's what I have to do. I kind of have to set it up and put it back down again because I don't have a, like a dedicated space where I can just leave it um, to kind of chill and there's not enough space for a laptop for a PC. So the gaming laptop probably works. Um, and um, the gaming laptop is really good too because there's a bunch of people that literally stream off a gaming laptop. Do you know what I mean? Um, and they play ac actual games. I... Um, well, all I do is fucking watch video clips on YouTube. You know what I mean? So there's people actually playing crazy games on the gaming laptop. So I think it should be fine. I I'm okay anyway. I'm sorry that I don't need recommendations or anything. I've got a whole list of stuff going there. But I'm just letting you guys know. Don't worry. I am looking at it. Um, but I will get it sorted. I promise you. Big up young old vibes. Nah, 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 nah. No, 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 my dear. No, 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 no. We don't take from the cat fund to put it in the laptop fund. We have a separate laptop fund. You feel me? The cat fund is for the cat. The laptop funds for the laptop. You get me? The cat funds for the cat. Laptop funds for the laptop. We don't mix them things there. We don't mix them. No, 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 no. We don't mix them things there. You know what I mean? You keep the cat where the cat needs to be. You feel me? Friday soon come as well. Oi, oi. You know how we get down. Oh, what's that? Have I got a cold? Or is there something stuff up my nose? Who knows? Who knows? But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big up everybody, appreciate you all. Big up bare nips, appreciate that also, mother. This is actually, you know what? Now, bare nips, now you've said that, you've actually brought me on neatly to my first fucking topic. Big up bare nips. My number one goal, my number one goal doing this show and also doing Taz, 
my cultural commentary podcast is that I want to be the number one cultural commentary podcast in the world. And I also want to be the number one background listening podcast in the world. Because in my personal opinion, I consume a lot of content. I'm sure you guys do. And when the content is bad, the first thing you want to do when you listen to it in the background is like run to your phone and like change the channel, right? Go to another channel, exit the fucking clip. Just it, you're, you're annoyed. So I want to be good enough that you can just leave me on in the background. Do what you want to do. Wipe your ass, you know, fuck your wife, pet your fucking dog. You can do what you want to do and I'm in the background <laughs> doing all my nonsense. That's my fucking dream to be the number one background listening podcast in the world. So when some of you guys give me that compliment, I swear to God, it warms my heart. I get so happy. I'm like, fuck, man. You guys trust me with your background? You guys trust me with your background? That means a lot, my friend. That means a lot. So to begin this, I want to play this clip courtesy of the Tuesday with Stories um, subreddit. It's regarding the guy called Mick Foley um, on Tuesday, on, um, what do you call it? What's his name? Journalist Podcast. And he says something that really resonated with me because I feel like I had the same feeling when I originally started listening to podcasts. And it's a shame that now podcasts aren't the same anymore. They don't really give you this feeling. But I thought Mick Foley had a very astute way to sum up why we all love streams, why we all love podcasts, and why we waste our time watching and keeping an eye on and following people that we don't know. Because, because it distracts us from the drudgery of our everyday life. So let's play this clip and you'll see what I mean. I got up here in 2013, two of the most brutal fucking winters back to back, 13 and 14. They were unbelievable. I lived in an apartment here in Astoria by the Burger King on 35th Street. My life was not in a good spot. I was running, we doing open mics, doing improv open mics, taking the subway, crying on the subway, no money, caught up, still doing drugs that I shouldn't be doing, fucking Yay. working, brutal. Used to sit in my room with chains that I got and went and got like dollar hamburgers from, from Burger King. And I'd sit there and I'd listen to Tuesdays with stories. Oh, wow. With Joe List and Mark Norman. And oh, I'd be my like, God. Man, and we would talk, me and the boys would talk about it, me and Kippy. Be like, man, those guys are doing it, man. Opening for this one, out with that one, the stories. Oh, so, I'm so touched. They- and honestly, that's the truth. And I think that's where, as much as we can all agree that the podcast bubble has well and truly burst, there's probably way too many, way too many podcasts out there and just not enough time for all of us to listen, to tune into all these fucking shows. The one thing they did in the beginning was that they provided great entertainment, great distractions from our everyday life, especially myself. I remember when I first started listening to pods, I must have been working in retail. That was in the era where I was like, you know, working full time retail, six days a week, sometimes nine hours per day. Um, you know, openings and then when, when you work retail, you work any kind of service industry job. If you're halfway competent, if you have a couple brain cells in your brain, more than likely, if you stay long enough, you're going to get the keys, right? You're going to become a key holder. They gas you up and, and make you believe, oh, the key holder is like a big prestigious thing. You get the key holder position and more often than not, you get, you know, a, you, you get like a slight increase in your salary. The increase I got was like one pound. And then you also have the added responsibility of having to look after the store, opening, closing it, cashing up, all these fucking stresses that don't really get compensated for correctly. But all that to say, the one thing that saved me working retail, being in a stock room, stacking shelves, um, you know, preparing stock for fucking Boxing Day, Boxing Day sales and shit was listening to pods. Being able to listen to pods in your ear, being able to have them on the stock room, on the shelf as you're fucking, you know, re- doing all the returns and shit. That stuff was an absolute night like lifesaver lifesaver and it was even better when the pods themselves they weren't trying to give you any lessons they weren't trying to tell you how to live your life they weren't trying to get overly political it's just a bunch of dudes just shooting a shit trying to make each other laugh nowadays pods are kind of been ruined because for whatever reason i think there's not really many exceptions maybe again never maybe an exception will be choosing with stories another exception might be bad friends Another exception might be Matt and Shane's Secret Podcast, but there's not a lot of podcasts within that comedy space that just enjoy making you laugh. 
at some stage of the show, they'll try and give you a lesson because they're successful. Because they've made a lot of money selling tickets, selling dick jokes on stage, somehow they think they have all the answers to the world's problems. They start to, you know, lecture you about how you should live your life, lecture you about fitness. Uh, like even like the Tom Tagura thing, suddenly you're a middle-aged man and you've turned into like a CrossFit athlete and you want us to fucking care. It's so annoying. But the genesis, the real, the real like start, the beauty, the purity of what those shows were for us were what Mick Foley saying. When in the beginning, that's why we all fell in love with them. In the beginning, we fell in love with them because they just provided some really fun, loose conversations. Sometimes what they actually did is that it was a way for you to talk about or to listen to people to talk about things that you probably couldn't talk about with your own friends. Maybe your friends were a little bit too well to do. Maybe you grew up in a, rel a religious community, right? A very conservative community. And you couldn't really talk about the things that you actually were thinking about. The really dark, fucking funny thoughts you had in your brain. Suddenly a comedian or a podcaster is doing it on, 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 on their pod. And you're like, oh, finally, I can kind of scratch that itch. But, the, you know, unfortunately, these guys all got too successful. Um, they all started making too much money. And they all started thinking their shit, didn't, they, they, their shit couldn't stink. And it's a real... I'm not going to lie. I know I'm, I sound soppy. I know I sound fucking gay. But I'm kind of sad that the podcast bubbles burst. I'm not going to lie. I'm actually sad that nowadays I only listen to, like, three podcasts on the regular. The rest, I just see clips. Because in the past, I used to bang them out. I'd be listening to a, I listen to a couple before work, lunchtime, after work. Like I was on it hard. Nowadays, I just catch clips, or it, or if that, do you know what I mean? Because they've all kind of fallen off, and it's really sad to be fair because they were all so good. Look at your mum's house. Honestly, think spare a thought, spare a thought for your mum's house fans. Think about how they must feel, because some people don't agree that the fire and the kid was ever good. I do. My opinion is. I was always a, I was a fan of the Fire and the Kid. That's how I got started, you know, being a part of the Bapperverse and, you know, being a homeless cat. I was first a fan. The Fire and the Kid on Fox, I thought was really good. I don't care what anyone says, that stuff was fucking goaded. But then it fell off a cliff. Okay, fair enough you don't believe me on that one. Imagine your mum's house. Your mum's house was one of the funniest podcasts out when it first popped. When Tom was fat, when they were poor, in that really small room... That podcast was fucking goaded. The clips, the fucking submissions from the fans, like all the little mad videos. Like, come on, man, that pod was awesome. And then it absolutely fell off a cliff. Can you imagine how sad it is for a fucking choose gay, right? For a, no, choose gay, for a, um, what you call it? Um, a, I forgot what their fucking names are, the fans. But the fans of your mum's house, can you imagine how bad it must feel for them that they have to watch what your mum's house has now become. Imagine how they must feel seeing Tom Segura turn into the guy he's turned into. Seeing Christina P be the woman that she is. Imagine how they must feel. It must be so fucking horrible. Honestly, I swear to God, like, sometimes I think to myself, man, the worst thing to happen to podcasts might not have been, like, it might have been YouTube or might have been ads. Maybe the ads were the worst thing that happened to YouTube because as soon as the ads came, as soon as all these guys started making really crazy money, it was over. It was over. As soon as they started making money, it was absolutely over. And, you know, the writing was on the wall and it all kind of came crashing down. And now we have maybe a handful, maybe less than five, maybe less than 10 actual good podcasts that we can all listen to and that we'd all recommend to our friends. Most of them are fucking trash. And it's a real shame. It really is a real shame. But I guess as this happens in all walks of life money and all that stuff kind of corrupts it and ruins it it always starts off pretty good and pure and then it ends up being a bit crappy towards the end so maybe i could i shouldn't be too sad about it it kind of is what it is but I, I can't lie being an actual long time legit fucking fan of pods it does kind of make me sad that they're not around anymore the, at the level that they used to be i'm not gonna lie it does actually make me sad i'm like god damn man i wish i wish it was the same i wish it was the fucking same i really fucking do but hey what can you do? What can you do? You just have to keep on trucking. You just have to keep on trucking. What are you guys saying in the chat? Uh, Booth McGee saying some people forget where they started or maybe they were trust fund kids all along. Yeah, probably a mix of that. Podcasts are lifesaver. Um, exactly, Josie. Coyler says um, YMH show got me through 60 hour work weeks in hospitals. Exactly. See what I mean? Co See, Coyler knows. You know, brother. 
Now I can't text it. Exactly. Imagine how, imagine going from listening to that show for 60 hours per week and now you can't get through one episode. Imagine how that's going to hurt. Imagine, bro. Honestly, these guys, they don't think about the fans, bro. Like, you guys started off so sick and now, like, people can't even get through your fucking videos. Most of them are fucking full of ads and shit. Like, come on, man. Do us a fucking favor. But yeah, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I wish I wish the stuff it could all go back in time. I wish it could all go back to how it was. The insight into UFC Fighters Life was a niche for T Fat K. Oh, good point there, James K. Good point. James K made a really good point. The insight into a UFC Fighters Life was a niche for T Fat K. Now it's just two rapists chatting shit. You know what? That might be a big that might be one of the reasons why it flopped. Apart from Brendan's ego going haywire, maybe a part of the reason why it flopped was that the niche, be the novelty wore off. And also, do you remember in the beginning, Brendan never really liked talking about the UFC. Do you remember? He was like, he'd, always, he'd almost get offended that people were reducing him to just being a fighter. Do you remember? That was kind of one of his odd things. Like, he never wanted to talk about fighting and shit. He was kind of reluctant. I was like, why, why would you call it the fire and the kid, but then you wouldn't talk about fighting? It doesn't make any sense. Um... Maybe he was kind of getting jealous that Brian had better picks. I didn't. I never understood that kind of thinking anyway. You can still do the same thing. You can still show your multifaceted by talking about a, a broad range of things. But when it comes down to your bread and butter, what you know you for, also talk about that. You can do two things at the same time. Um, name one funny thing Christina P ever said ever. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, that woman, bro. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, Tom can't even look up P in the eye during the show. Yeah, exactly. Exactly 40 FPS. A lot of people on the Your Mum's House Reddit think they're going to get divorced. I don't think so. I don't, I think people over, over... They read too much into all that shit. Don't get me wrong. It's probably a bit awkward and shit, but I don't think they're ever going to get divorced. I don't see that happening, to be fair. I know a lot of people on the Your Mum's House Reddit think that's the case, but I don't think so. Um, these podcasters, comedian told all these good stories the first year. Oh. Don't say that, Ryan Joseph. You're probably right, innit? They got all the good shit out the first couple of years and then that was it. They didn't have nothing else to offer. <laughs> oh, I still maintain. By the way, I don't care what anyone says. I still maintain. History Hyenas was maybe one of the most underrated podcasts within that comedy space. Why those guys broke up? I will never know. I will never know. I've never listened to a Chris Stefano or the other guy's podcast ever since. But together, History Hyenas was really fucking good, man. Really fucking good. I don't know why they ended that. Um, no, I think they ended it because uh, Chris, Chris Stefano got that job in it. He got like a TV job. Like, honestly, comedians are so money hungry. It's insane. He'd rather do that shitty TV show that was like about building a bar in people's gardens and shit. Do you remember? That was, what, that was part of the show. That's why he left History Hyenas. He got, he got this show where he, could, he was the host of this TV show, game show thing, kind of like Pimp My Ride, like Pimp My Shed, and they'll turn someone's shed into like a bar. It's like, what? Like Bar Shed Rescue or something. It's like, huh? Like, why Why would you leave Hishiraenis to do that? Unless maybe Hishiraenis wasn't making enough money, but I never I never really understood. I really fucking never understood. I don't know. I don't know. Um. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Man. I don't know why they couldn't save that, but you know. Maybe there were some underlying issues there. And a, lot, and a lot of these guys also, I've kind of seen with the whole like Trash Tuesdays thing. I know we're all kind of, you know, we all have our own parasocial relationships with these type of dudes and girls. But I think a lot of these guys aren't as good friends as they, as they actually pretend to be. They're not really friends. <clears throat> I think that's why whenever there's a stumbling block in the business, they split up straight away. They can't ever like work through it, you know? That's what ends up happening. They always kind of split up or, you know what I mean? It always eventually ends up splitting up. They can never just work through their problems because at the crux of it, there's nothing really tethering them together. There's no real bond. It's just a business transaction thing. So I think that's probably a lot of the reason why um, these pods never really last because, you know, it just kind of all falls by the wayside. But regardless, um, I just want to say this. Thank you to all of you who've been tuning in to the show. I appreciate every single one of you that tunes in. I also want to take a minute to appreciate myself because I did decide to look at my YouTube and check the early episodes of The Random Show. I went and saw the early episodes of The Random Show, right? The early episodes. And look at this. Look at this. 
the first ever random show that I did was actually called Open Tabs. I think I changed the name because I think the name was a show that Burt Kreischer did, I think. And I think I changed it because of that, right? But originally, I started off with a show called Open Tabs, number one. And the first episode I ever did was three years ago. 377 views. Episode two, 153 views. Episode four, 153. Episode three, 196, right? Like, just doing this for the fucking fun during COVID. Absolutely having a big laugh. So I want to appreciate all you guys, but also want to give my fucking black burnt self a fucking pat on the back, right? A big pat on the back for fucking sticking through and still doing this shit. Because, you know, 377 views is brutal. But man does it, man does it, man does it. Man does it for the laughs, for the bants, for the lows, and for the fucking, you know, ha-ha he he's. So I'm really happy and really grateful that I've come this far. Still a lot, still a long way to go, but we're just shooting the shit. We're having a good time. So I really do appreciate that I've kind of, you know, the views have increased. People like to introduce, you know, tune into the show and all that malarkey. Um, going forward, though, going forward. I'm thinking, what do you guys think about this? I'm thinking going forward, I might start doing these live shows on my dedicated random show channel. I think I might need to start splitting it up now. Now that 200 is here, maybe I'll start doing all the episodes going forward on the random show and then start doing the Taz on the Taz because I've got a separate channel right here that I don't really use, to be honest. But I might start doing it directly on there only. And then keeping this channel for the Agatino Zynga show only. What do you guys think in the stream chat? Would that be a right way to go about doing things? Or should I just keep on doing it the way I'm doing it now? Let me know in the stream chat. What do you reckon? What do you reckon? What do you reckon? What do you reckon? Should I keep the random show on here? Or should I go over there? Don Dutta said separating it is better. Thank you. Appreciate you, my friend. You need a consultation session with the geniuses. <laughs> yeah. I'm all set on marketing. <laughs> yes, do it for the random show channel, says Ryan Joseph. Watch last night's Taz for some feet peaks. Nobody watches Taz anyway. <laughs> Oi! Oi, Chris! Chris, you fucking cunt. People do watch Taz. Fuck off. Oi! Oi! How dare you! How dare you? <laughs> Whatever's going to benefit you both, says Joe. We'll do what you want to do. I'll still support. Thank you, Severa Design. Separate it because it seems like two different audiences. Okay, thank you, King Bayo. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, big up, uh, um, A-ho Joe. Big up, appreciate you. One of a bunch of keeping them together. Is this some ties a bit? Okay, cool. Yeah, true. Yeah, why? I'm so happy to COVID happened because that's how I found you. Yeah, exactly. Shades Cow. I'm so happy COVID happened too because I probably wouldn't have done YouTube. I've had my channel for years. I've had my channel for... When have I had my channel since from? Let me actually see. I think I've had my channel since... I'm going to say... Where's the about? How do I get to the about section? Yeah, there you go. I've had my channel since... 2007! Big up, Abe Martinez. Love the work, bro. Appreciate you, my friend. 200. No, we're doing. We're episode 200. We're 200 gangs. Appreciate you, Abe Martinez. Appreciate you. I'm ep. Two 2007. 2000 fucking seven. Big up, Matthew Escoline. What's up, Zynga Nation? Happy yeah. 200. Yeah. Episode 200, gang. Big up, Matthew Escoline. But yeah, um, I've been around for a while. So, um, um, I'm also happy that the pandemic happened because I don't think I would have taken my channel as seriously. So the pandemic was the worst time ever because I lost my job at the time that I had, which was fucking awful. I was one of those idiots that moved jobs just before the pandemic. I think I moved like November 2019 and then the pandemic hit in like January or something. <laughs> Honestly, man. Oh, man. I only got like two paychecks. I was like, fuck. I was like, I was like, Brendan, fuck. You know, when the email come through. Fuck! <laughs> that was me. 
I did a Brendan, bro. I was so pissed, bro. But yeah, I'm happy the pandemic happened because I obviously was able to do the fucking show. So yeah. Um. Anyway, long story less long. Please do check out my um other channel, Random Show channel. Right. I'm gonna copy the link here and I'm gonna put it in the stream chat so you guys can see it. Subscribe to there because from episode, what do you call it? From episode two hundred one onwards. I'm only going to be streaming it. No, what should I do, actually? Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to stream it directly on there. I'm going to start streaming directly on there. Um, and then, so you catch it on there. So if you want to see my Random Show episodes, go to the Random Show channel. That's where they'll all be. Um, this episode will obviously still be on here. The clips will be on here. But episode 201 onwards, we're going to be doing it on the other channel. Build it up slowly but slowly but surely. And then we're going to go from there. You get me? And of course, if you want to check out my DJ channel, that's also available there. Um, that's where I'm going to be putting all my DJ things as well. Actually, no. You know what? Now that I'm separated, I might just keep my DJ stuff on here. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But either way, my DJ channel is there as also. Check that out if you want. Check that out if you want. 